We all know that food is essential to human life, and lucky for us, the Earth is brimming with it in all shapes and forms. But have you ever wondered how people who don't live on Earth prepare their meals? Well, they don't have much preparation to do compared to us. Keep watching to learn about the contents of space food and how astronauts can prepare a full meal for four people in about five minutes. If you love food and the amazing science behind making it efficient for space, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe for more. Today, we're showing you what astronauts eat. Mercury Program Did you know that when humans were first starting to step on the edges of the Earth's atmosphere, scientists weren't even sure if it was possible to eat food in space? They worried about the mechanism of ingestion, and they even worried that the body wouldn't be able to absorb nutrients in zero gravity. John Glenn, the first American to eat in space, agreed with his fellow Mercury team that the food was not very good. However, he was able to prove consumption and nutrient absorption in space were indeed possible. His first meal consisted of applesauce, which he ate from a tube, and xylose sugar pills dissolved in water. Glenn demonstrated that his body's ability to swallow and digest still worked in the conditions of weightlessness. The first foods brought aboard the Mercury mission for human consumption were less than appetizing. They were based on army survival rations and often consisted of a mashed up puree of food packaged in an aluminum tube to be consumed by sucking it out with a straw. The method of delivery to the human body for consumption was efficient. Given that it was direct with no risk of loose particles to contaminate ship machines, Machinery. This is an example of pureed beef and vegetables, not exactly the most appetizing. Given its similarities to baby food, many of the first astronauts to eat the first space foods complained, especially regarding the lack of variety, urging NASA scientists to expand their menus. Gemini Program by the time of the Gemini mission, space food science had advanced a bit. The most efficient method to transport food to space was to remove its moisture, 99% of it to be precise, which we know as freeze-drying or dehydrating. They also came in bite-sized, ready-to-eat cubes. These foods were coated with gelatin, or oil to prevent crumbling, which posed a serious issue back in the day and even in modern times. Food crumbs in life-sustaining equipment is never a good thing. Aboard Gemini, astronauts had packages of common combination meals, like this one here, which consisted of an appetizer, vegetables, and even dessert, a serious upgrade from the puree-style food of mercury. To freeze-dry a food item to prepare for packing on board a ship, workers needed to rapidly freeze the item in question before removing its moisture via heating in a vacuum chamber. After this, they vacuum sealed the item, allowing it to be preserved for long stretches of time, even at room temperature. Some items available included shrimp cocktail and butterscotch pudding. This is an example of a a typical Gemini meal, consisting of strawberry cereal cubes, peaches, a beef sandwich, and beef and gravy. Alongside the food are the tools necessary for making them edible. The water gun, which was used to inject cold water into the freeze-dried packages to rehydrate them, and some scissors to open the package and begin the feast. Apollo Program the Apollo mission paved the way for a better food program. This mission was the first to incorporate the use of hot water in food rehydration, facilitating the process and even improving the taste of the foods. Taste improvement was significant because weightlessness led to congestion for the astronauts, which meant a dulling of their senses of smell and taste. The astronauts of Apollo 8 were treated to a Christmas surprise when opening their meal packages. They found a thermostabilized meal consisting of turkey with gravy and cranberry sauce that didn't even need rehydration. It could simply be opened and eaten with a spoon. It was during the Apollo food program that astronauts were introduced to the notorious Spoon Bowl, a food container whose contents could be eaten with a spoon like this one. For the astronauts of the Apollo 13 mission, their spacesuits were equipped with a canteen so they could drink liquids such as water or juice as they worked on the moon. By the time of Apollo 15, solid food snacks such as an apricot food bar were accessible to keep the hungry astronauts going as they labored across the surface of the moon for longer work periods. The Apollo program was long and arduous, and it required advancements in food science for the astronauts who would eventually become the first humans to step foot on any celestial body. Skylab Skylab was a different program by NASA than other extraterrestrial missions. It was the first and only space station from the United States orbiting the planet for six years before plummeting back to terra firma. Skylab was the first U.S. space program to feature a unique area for dining. They were able to attach themselves around a table and eat like in a normal dinner setting. In addition, quality of food greatly improved in Skylab. This was the first mission in which scientists decided food edibility was more important than anything else. And 
and thus the menu got a boost in variety and flavor. There were 72 items on this luxurious menu, and the astronauts even had a refrigerator and freezer for the first time. This meant that astronauts were able to finally indulge in the earthly delicacy of ice cream, a favorite among Skylab scientists. Additionally, because Skylab's solar wings provided power instead of fuel cells that produced water, the familiar dehydrated foods of the past needed to be limited to conserve on water. Instead, foods were preserved in aluminum cans like this one, or plastic pouches, which could be reheated and enjoyed. Because of the advancements in food quality and variety, and the designation of a dining area, the crew members of Skylab were able to choose their own meals prior to cooking, a luxury not afforded by previous missions. Apollo Soyuz Test Project the Apollo Soyuz test project was a politically loaded spaceflight between the superpowers of the US and the Soviet Union. It was a joint effort that ended the space race, and more importantly, it meant that American astronauts were able to try what the Soviets were eating on their Soyuz missions. This is an example of a Soviet delicacy eaten in space. Canned, jellied beef tongue, surely a unique and different experience for the Americans. At least it was a variety from their standard menu, which they certainly grew bored of very quickly. This here is an example of Riga bread, or Russian black bread. This mission was important in showing that the Americans and the Soviets were capable of working together to reach their goals of scientific advancement. They showed unity and camaraderie, and food played an important role in that. The food they shared broke down the boundaries that their nations built. Here you can see a photo of two American astronauts, Thomas P. Stafford and Donald Deke Slayton, sharing tubes of Russian borscht, which is a beet soup. In a nature of fun, they pasted labels of Russian vodka over the tubes, as if to celebrate a drink in honor of their Soviet space brothers. The mission was short, less than two weeks, but the impact it had on the world due to the tensions between the two great nations was felt for decades after. The Space Shuttle the space shuttle only just recently retired from its 30-year stint of ferrying humans, supplies, and machines to and from Earth. Even from its first launch in 1981, however, the meals eaten by the crew members were most indistinguishable from meals consumed by people on Earth. The astronauts' missions usually lasted on average seven days, and they had the choice between sticking to a basic menu designed around a seven-day mission or choosing their own menus and meal substitutions. If they were to choose their own meals, a dietitian would check their menu to verify they would be receiving the right balance of nutrients. This is an example of a typical meal on its tray aboard the space shuttle, not too foreign looking compared to the mystical food tubes and cubes of earlier spaceflight missions. Their meals were prepared in a gallery that included a water dispenser and even an oven. Suddenly living in space doesn't sound so bad. By the launch of the space shuttle Discovery, astronauts were living the life. Famous chef Emeril Lagasse really put the bam in their meals, constructing a menu that included mashed potatoes, jambalaya, and bread pudding. Additionally, the space shuttles were loaded with fresh foods from a typical grocery store about 12 hours before flight, which would be the first foods consumed by the crew. Nothing beats fresh fruits, bread, and vegetables after a history of puree dinners from an aluminum tube. The space shuttle missions were the bridge between historic and modern food methods for astronauts today. Storage Today there are six categories into which space food falls today aboard the International Space Station, otherwise known as the ISS. The first three categories are more familiar to us Earthlings. Astronauts can eat fresh foods such as fruits and vegetables, natural form foods such as nuts, tortillas and cookies, and dried foods, also known as intermediate moisture foods such as dried fruits or even beef. The other three categories require special preparation that doesn't normally happen for food on our grocery store shelves on Earth. Freeze-dried foods still make an appearance today. Thermostabilized foods as well are very practical to take on board. They are heat processed to destroy harmful microbes that might flourish at room temperature. So these foods can be stored without the need for a refrigerator or freezer. Lastly, ISS astronauts can also eat irradiated foods. These foods are placed in foil packages and blasted with gamma radiation or electron beams to inhibit bacterial growth. This might sound dangerous, but the World Health Organization confirms these foods are safe to eat. Most of these foods have been prepared, so they can be stored at ambient temperature for long periods of time. However, some foods like fresh fruits and vegetables have a limited shelf life and are considered a luxury. They are delivered periodically with supplies from ground crew to the inhabitants of the ISS. Today's Menu 
Today's astronauts typically cycle through a seven-day menu consisting of three meals a day and some additional snacks. Their foods are extremely familiar to us on Earth, consisting of items such as scrambled eggs, chicken and rice, beef stroganoff with noodles, butter cookies, tea and coffee, beef patties, spaghetti, and soup. Because today's astronauts are usually aboard the International Space Station, which welcomes scientists from several countries with space programs, the astronauts are able to eat a wider variety of food from different cultures. Many foods come in ready to eat form, meaning that the crew of four can sit down and have a dinner together in about five minutes. Some foods, however, do need to be reconstituted and heated, a process that can take up to 30 minutes. Perhaps most importantly, astronauts can make special requests. Food can be comforting, and sometimes a little taste of home is what they need to keep powering through their research. The food needs to be checked beforehand to ensure that they can be preserved in the environment of the ISS and provide the right amount of nutrients. Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield requests requested maple syrup cookies, duck rietes, and candied wild smoked salmon, allowing him to show his culture to his crewmates and to enjoy a taste of home. French astronaut Thomas Pesquet even got to celebrate his birthday with his home country's delicacy of macaroons. Astronauts have a wider selection than ever before. Shipping food to space the International Space Station is usually restocked with food and other supplies every 90 days, so an emergency food system isn't exactly necessary. That doesn't mean, however, that a situation in which food needs to be rationed can't arise. It has already happened once in the past. In 2004, there was a delay in the next food shipment, causing the ISS crew consisting of Leroy Chio and Salajan Sharapov to cut their caloric intake by 10%. They each lost between 5 and 10 pounds due to this. Today, the usual shipment process is quite streamlined. There is about a month of planning prior to launch, and in the last two to three days before the launch, the food is loaded onto the designated shuttle. When the U.S. Space Shuttle program was still operational and responsible for shipping up food and supplies, it usually carried 3.8 pounds of food per astronaut per day. In addition, it kept an emergency food supply aboard for anyone taking the shuttle to join the ISS crew or return to Earth that consisted of 22 days worth of food per astronaut, roughly 2,000 calories a day for each crew member. Today's current shuttle systems include two private companies hired by NASA, known as Orbital ATK and SpaceX, as well as a disposable Russian craft known as Progress. Progress is designed to resupply the ISS, dock automatically, and then be filled to the brim with waste and other garbage before being sent to burn up in the atmosphere. The International Space Station Astronauts aboard the ISS have to abide by certain nutritional requirements set by dietitians. They are told how many calories they need to eat and how many grams of protein, fats, and carbohydrates collectively known as macromolecules they need as well. This process is not too unfamiliar to those who are fitness gurus. Counting calories and macros is just all in a day's work. The ISS crew get to choose their meals and they even get to have condiments to spice up their foods if they don't suit their needs, such as ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise, and even liquid salt and pepper. Because the ISS houses people from different countries, the food varies, but it also means that crew members can share each other's dishes and culture. We've already covered the sharing of U.S. Soviet food, but did you know Japanese delicacies such as udon noodles, tempura soba, and curry noodles can be eaten aboard the ISS as well. Chinese crew members can eat pickled cabbage and pork, fried rice, and spiced beef. By the time Christmas rolls around, crew members usually get to celebrate twice. The U.S. and Russian space programs tend to dominate operations aboard the ISS, so they often have a typical American Christmas dinner of turkey, green beans, and cornbread on the 25th of December. Then for the Russian Orthodox celebration on the 7th of January, they get to indulge in delicious, Russian mashed potatoes, meat, and cranberry sauce. A beautiful way to bond and celebrate is always through food. And that covers all the bases of what's really in space food. We hope you enjoyed learning what astronauts eat. And if you did, check out 10 foods you'll never buy again after knowing how they are made. Thanks for watching.